Here are my top 10 true or false 3D printing facts. First, you can make money selling 3D prints. What do you think? It's true. There's a lot of factors that go into making money selling 3D prints and a lot of questions. Are you making your own designs? And if so, are they designs people actually want to buy? Then there's how much to charge for the actual print time, the filament costs, shipping costs, and the one thing most people overlook or underestimate, what's your hourly wage? And be realistic. But the most important thing is to find the right market or niche. Whether it's online or local, if you sell the same thing everybody else is selling, well, you may not actually make any sales. So yes, you can make money selling 3D prints, but it's just like any job. It takes time, research, and perseverance. Sounds like a lot of work. Next, you can't sell prints from free online databases. That's false. And this follows up on that previous statement about making money selling 3D prints. I put a video out a while back about this very subject and a number of people accused me of either being misleading or just outright lying. And to be clear, I'm not a lawyer. This is just all my personal opinion, not legal advice. But the truth is in the legal writing as I put in that video. Check it out if you want more in-depth information. Now, there may be more additional requirements like attributing the designer. Just make sure to do everything that's required and you should be good. Oh yeah, and one more thing. If it's obviously a character or an item from a movie, TV show, comic, whatever, especially Disney, don't even try it. Even if the designer made it themselves and says it's free to sell, it's still illegal. Pet G doesn't need an enclosure. True. There's a lot that goes into this one, and just like most things, it's dependent on a lot of factors. Things like your normal ambient room temp, what printer you're using, the humidity where you live, and so on. Suffice it to say that, at least for Pet G, you won't regret having an enclosure, but it may not be necessary for your particular circumstances. It, it's a box. He's mint in the box! Maker World and Multicolor Prints are only for bamboo printers. False. If you skip Maker World because you believe this one, I promise you, you're missing out. No 3D print has to be printed in multiple colors. Maker World has nearly all the same files you're going to find in other databases as well as those that are made to work on bamboo printers. And there are a lot of designers out there that don't design anywhere else. Never buy a bed slinger or other inexpensive printer. False. It would be nice to think we could all just get along. Why can't we be friends? There's plenty of people out there who will tell you that bed slingers are the worst of the worst when it comes to literally any printer on the market. The Creality Ender 3 series has long been a favorite of many beginner 3D printer enthusiasts, and the Bamboo A1 and A1 Mini have really taken a big chunk out of the market, but there's still plenty of options. Prusa, AnchorMake, and others are still making and selling 3D printers that are bed slingers with no end in sight. But what really matters is what you need and how much can you spend on this hobby. If you want to learn more, I also have another video on my channel to help you with this very need so you don't waste your money. You must use adhesives. False. There are plenty of times to use adhesives on your build plate, but to say that you have to use them, well, that would just be plain wrong. If you're having an issue with corners lifting or some other problem like that, make sure to exhaust all the troubleshooting steps and slicing and filament and printer and, well, then it would probably be a good idea to use an adhesive as well. It's also a good idea to use adhesive in a counterintuitive way when printing with PETG of all things. A regular build plate may actually stick too well to your print, so the adhesive sort of there as more of a barrier to let it release. Of course, there's a whole lot of build plates out there that either don't need adhesives, shouldn't need them, or tell you flat out just not to use them. 
this big tree tech cryo plate that I've talked about before, well, here's an example of a bill plate that doesn't need anything but a good wiping with a clean cloth. No adhesive needed here. Bamboo printers don't need a purge tower. True. And this is true for a lot of prints, but also extremely use case specific. If your prints need to be really clean and you're using opposing colors like white and red, well, you're probably going to want to use a purge tower to keep from getting that color bleed into the white. Other than that, though, it really all depends on your needs for your print. Basically, quality versus speed versus waste. Cheap filament isn't worth buying. False. And I'll be the first to admit to trying out some occasional too-good-to-be-true priced filament. And yes, I've tossed more than a few half-empty spools. But it seems like a lot of manufacturers are really doing their best to get those prices down. And I've paid $10 for a full spool and gotten great results. I've paid $25 for spools that I've had horrible results with. One of my most recent favorite filaments is from Gabe and his team over at Slant 3D. They're working really hard to get to $10 for an American-made one kilogram spool of filament. Now, I've tried it and I've been shocked at how well it prints for that price. The point is, if you're willing to try and possibly waste a little bit of money and time, there's plenty of filaments out there that have great prices. Or go to a trusted source like Slant 3D or another brand you know works. Just because the price is cheap, <coughs> I mean inexpensive, <laughs> that doesn't mean it's bad. 3D printed parts are worthless. False. But they have to be designed and printed right. And this one, it's all on you. You probably know that putting PLA in your car, well, that's probably going to melt or worse. So I just recommend that you do your research and probably a good bit of testing and you'll have a better 3D printed part that'll work just as good or better than anything you could have ever expected. Filament moisture is a real problem. True. Regardless of what anybody else says, online or offline, moisture does have an effect on filament, especially if you live in Georgia like I do, where humidity can be 100% without a drop of rain to be seen. Well, maybe not 100%, but close enough. Here's the thing. Moisture in your filaments may not be a problem for you. Congratulations. But for a lot of us, it's real. Discounting it because you don't deal with it is like saying that nobody ever needs to know how to swim when you live in the desert. Just keep swimming, swimming, swimming. For people in my situation, a filament dryer or a dehumidifier, well, it's an absolute necessity. And that's why I was particularly excited to see this new dual spool filament dryer from Evos. You should know going in, if you do get it, that it doesn't come pre-assembled. And I say that because when I opened up the box the first time, kind of freaked out a little bit. That's a lot of stuff in there. But that being said, it really was probably one of the easiest things I've ever put together, especially in 3D printing. The instructions were clear and it just sort of happened except for all those leftover parts that I found. Well, that's when I realized two different things. There's an add-on that raises it up if you get a three kilogram spool, which is awesome. And all those other parts, well, like there's a motor and screws and a roller and they're backups in case you need them. I have to say, I was a little flabbergasted when I realized that. I'm just, I'm kind of flabbergasted when you say things like that, it's weird. I've been testing it out and what I love more than anything else is all the presets for nearly every filament you will ever need in a home setting. There are presets for standard PLA, PETG, TPU, along with ABA, PA, PC, ASA, PVA, and PP. <laughs> LOL, SMH, sorry, BRB. Are you trying to be funny? No, but somebody else is trying. Do you agree with all of my facts and whether they're true or false? Well, hopefully I haven't stirred up too much controversy. Leave a comment, a nice comment, please, and let's get the conversation going. 
you know how it goes. Let's talk it out, have fun, and help all our 3D printing lab partners to learn, create, and amaze.